At 7pm on the 3rd of January, 1831, mill owner Thomas Ashton was shot and killed by striking workers in Manchester. James Garside later confessed to the assassination. When his co-conspirator William Mosley questions which one of the Ashtons he shot, he replies, it didn't matter which it was. It was one of them. Mary Barton, or A Tale of Manchester Life, is Elizabeth Gaskell's first novel, published in 1848, and it is inspired by the aforementioned assassination of Thomas Ashton. And I'm not going to make you wait until the end of the video. This is the sort of classic novel I love. It is very underrated, much like its author, Elizabeth Gaskell. I really think she is one of the best Victorian authors going not going gone one of the best victorian authors gone that's a bit depressing gaskell introduces you to a raft of characters early on and i was really a bit stressed out following all of these characters and not really sure who everyone was fortunately gaskell has a simple solution typhoid everyone is hungry there is no work what work there is doesn't pay enough the crops have failed and mary's father john puts it best when asked if he would like something to eat, he replies, It's work I be wanting. Meanwhile, Mary, who is beautiful, dreams of being a lady. But upon the death of her mother, she is put in charge of the household. And it has a slow maturing effect on her. Jem Wilson has loved her since they were children. Mary and Jem's fathers, John and George, are friends who both work at the local mill. But Jem is not what Mary is looking for in a partner. He is just an engineer. And then there's Harry Carson, the son of a local mill owner. He's also interested, but Mary is capricious. Failing to get work, failing to feed their families, the mill owners hatch a plan. And we know the plan. It's bad news for the Tom Ashton of this novel. Gaskell is able to blend these two storylines together seamlessly, and I love this. It's not that Gaskell has written a love story and then written a story about a union assassination and mixed them together. The two major plots of this story are interlinked, and it gives us an unusual snapshot into life in the early 1800s. A woman struggling to feed her family because her father can't make money. And the same woman considering two suitors. This would have been a reality. Your love life isn't on hold for typhoid. Actually, that's a really bad example. Fix your love life with typhoid. Side effects may include fever, vomiting, stomachache, diarrhea, and death. Gunpowder fiction and plotting is not responsible. One thing I love is how Gaskell empathizes with the situation and her characters. We are about to see a man be assassinated, but we understand the motives. The man in question doesn't pay his work as well, and there are other men out of work. Why is that? Well, we already know the answer. There is cheap labor overseas. There are crop failures. Gaskell isn't judging either the bourgeoisie or the proletariat. The mill owners are slowly killing the starving workers, but the starving workers are about to kill the mill owner. And it's almost inevitable. It's almost providence. Life and its consequences are out of their hands. It's a, a fate accomplished. If you've read Gaskell's more popular novel, North and South, this is a very similar novel both in themes and ideas, but I like Mary Barton better. And one of the reasons is the inclusion of Esther, a fallen woman driven to alcoholism and homelessness, and we're left assuming to prostitution as well. I'm not gonna discuss that, but I am gonna leave a link to a wonderful review by Rebecca from The Lazy Bookworm, where she discusses the term fallen woman and what that could mean especially in relation to the novel Mary Barton. Despite Esther being a fallen woman, she is ultimately a kind-hearted, salt-of-the-earth type of lady. And she is such a fantastic example of the humanity Gaskell instills into her characters. Victorian novels often have quite a slow pace in comparison to modern novels. They were just more patient back. They would have hated TikTok, and rightfully so, it's an abomination. Mary Barden, however, is quite quick. It is really engaging, a real page turner. And while other Victorian novels have waned in popularity, Gaskell is an author of increasing popularity. And I think pacing is a big part of that. However, 
that's not the whole story. There is a universality to Gaskell's work. The novel might be about industrialism and chartism, but these issues are wrapped up in class divide and we are living in a time where class divide is increasing. In Australia, the number of people going hungry is on the increase as rent prices rise to above welfare payments in most cities. This story, Mary Barton, it feels relevant. It doesn't feel as removed as other Victorian novels. Gaskell is fast becoming one of my favourite Victorian novelists. And if you love this book and you've not read Emile Zola's Germinal or Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, add those classics to your TBR. For me, I haven't read much Victorian literature in the last 12 months and this was a wonderful reminder of what I love about that era and while I need to read or reread more classics, I'm giving Mary Barton four and a half stars. This is a novel that could have been examined from a number of different directions. So let me know in the comments section if you've read Mary Barton, what books do you think are similar? Remember, it's completely free to like a video. And if you're not subscribed already and you like books, hit that subscribe button. And why not watch this rather silly video here where my wife and I discuss some of the best Victorian novels. Bye bye.